Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are back in War Thunder, and it's time to get some experts on some of the rank 6 stuff that we found on the dev server. Obviously, today we are talking about the new four vehicles that will grace War Thunder in updates 1.77 at the higher tiers. Some very anticipated vehicles, including the Abrams, the Challenger, the Leopard 2K, and of course the T64B. So today, with me, I have Bad Mofo and Mills, who are two very experienced players in War Thunder who played a hell of a lot of Rank 6, especially with the MBT and the KPZ-70s. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through what we feel the tanks are going to look like when they're on the live server, but basically based on what we saw on the dev server. Now obviously... The dev server is subject to change, it looks like we're also going to get a second dev server, but we can only go on what we've seen and also what we've read about these vehicles. And the general layout of this is we're going to go through each vehicle by itself, and then at the end maybe we'll do some kind of rankings and maybe talk about how they're going to fight each other. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the M1 Abrams. So let's start off with a layup question. The Abrams is obviously a great combination of mobility, a gun, maybe not the 105, but it's still pretty good, and also armor behind it. Do you think, Mofo, that if we look at the Abrams, is it one of those vehicles that Rex described as the second best at everything, so therefore the best, or do you think there are parts of it which are definitely better than the other rank 6 vehicles that are being added to the game? Thanks for having me, Boom. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with, uh, I strongly agree with Rex on that, uh, with the exception of one thing, is survivability, uh, being the uh, blowout doors that they incorporated in the game, which is, uh, I'm very uh, pleased of how that operation has been coded into game and operates in the uh, in the tank in battle. But uh, yes, I agree. I feel it's second best at everything. Um, and in the right hands, it's the best you can have. So one of the issues that a few players have brought up is the armor itself. And this has kind of been one which has been discussed across all of the vehicles, apart from the Leopard 2K. So when we look at the armor that was there on the dev server, is it comparable to what we see from a historic sense? And also, maybe you want to expand on the weak spots that uh, we looked at also in the dev server. Yeah, sure. All right. Uh, we understand a thing of balance. And uh, when people scream Abrams um, or say the word Abrams in the tank world, uh, us Westerners, uh, we're proud of it, right? And uh, I do feel like the armor values were a bit of a letdown for a lot of people. But honestly, I feel as we're close to being on par with it should be. If anything, I would give it about 20 more millimeters of effective uh, uh uh, negation with uh, the kinetic and, and uh, chemical warheads or chemical rounds. Uh, just add 20 to both and you'll be fine there. Uh, you touched on some other things as well. Uh, one that I noticed real quick, and I'm actually looking at the page right now. It seemed to be lacking a little bit of a uh, turret ring protection. Um, the That is a major weak spot, and I don't know if that was purposely just left out to so it could be targeted uh, for uh, opposing players for balance or whatnot. We can only assume this. But uh, I'm actually looking. You can. It's not classified at all. Anybody can look this up. We, you can look at the assembly line on the Abrams, how they're put together. The only thing that's classified are the components and values of such. But uh, you can simply see here, I'm actually looking at a 36 uh step build the page on this abrams and uh i'll read it here exactly as it states uh, a completed turret is hoisted onto the onto a completed hole afterwards workers will add armor and skirting and tighten the turret properly so to educate a little bit those that don't know these turrets are simply just set on raceways and then clamped into place 
And before they clamp them into place on these raceways, they have, they clearly say they add skirting and armor. That I did not find that any x ray or armor value uh, pictures in the game on the server. So, kind of wondering if that would be implemented or if it's going to be one of those things like our super person just not have what it's supposed to have. So, only time will tell. Hopefully, things will change. If not, I feel like it's a fair balance. I'm not going to be upset. Um, I'm, you're just going to have to be a little more skilled, uh, pay attention to it, be aware of it. You're not going to run a gun in these tanks, you know, maybe one, but not, not in this and not in some others. So another key part of the Abrams, which is very much going to be emphasized, especially when we look at the Challenger and the T-64, when we look at the matchups between them, is the speed of this machine. And it seems like the speed may actually catch a bunch of people off guard. So with the current meta in War Thunder basically being the MBT-70, the KPZ spinning about the place, trying to get to uh, very good positions and then waiting and hopefully catching somebody out or maybe a T-64 maybe bouncing something, pushing towards them, you know, all of that stuff. Do you think the Abrams sits more on the T-64 side of things, or the challenge, the uh, Chieftain side of things? Or do you think it's more of this run-and-gun idea with the MBT and the KPZ? Because obviously it has both aspects, you know, a bit of armor and a bit of speed. Or do you think maybe it'll create its own little gap between these two playstyles? I believe it's going to do either very well. Um, it's going to be the most... Um roundabout tank you'll have the most options of gameplay you can hold down with it you can flank with it um the only thing i would not do with this tank and it's pretty much any of these new tanks these tanks and i think people forget at this time era you didn't have under under 500 meter battles and in some of the uh doctrines or whatnot these tanks were developed around an armor they were designed to engage enemy over 500 meters, more or less, well, excuse me, more of 1,000 to 3,000 meters, optimally around 2,000 meters from all the history books I've read and, and doctrines or whatnot and what these tanks were designed to do. That being said, for the game, that's what we're talking about. Those strengths and weaknesses are... Um, Put into these tanks, especially the Abrams and the Challenger, and whatnot. We'll get into those later. But uh, the Abrams, if you want to flank with it, it's going to get the job done and going to get it done well. If you want to hold down on it, it's going to do it well. And it, along with the T64, about the only two that I would do urban warfare or close quarters. And the only reason I'm saying the Abrams I would do that with is the fact of its survivability, the crew spacing, and also the blowout doors. You have, you know, you have two or three lives there. Uh, you know, you know, it's, it's got a higher survivability factor than anything else in the game at this tier right now. And also on top of that, you have the smoke grenades and then you have the engine fumes. You have all of this stuff to keep you alive. So we've talked about speed, armor, obviously the last thing is the gun itself. So the ammunition, when we actually look at it, looks very middle of the road if we compare it to all of the, the three other vehicles that we have new at rank 6. But one of the interesting things for me was how expensive the second APFS uh, DS round is. And I was wondering if you believe the expense is justified and if these rounds are even realistic or is there any other rounds that maybe could be added to the abrams that it actually used in game to uh you know to basically make sure the gun is able to penetrate everything okay there's uh there's this is a multiple answered question uh you know uh, multiple answers for this question and multiple solutions right and it has to do with armor versus rounds and rounds versus armor and which tank blah 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 okay that being said uh you will attack the price point first with the 774 round the 774 round i feel is way overpriced uh at least by half and the, the price needs to be cut in half because by far next to the challengers round it's the second worst round 
it's offered in all these tanks. <clears throat> and it's probably for balance. You know, I get that. And I'm fine with that. But to negate its opposition, really the only fear you're going to have are the T-64. So actually both variants. In the dev server, both variants of the T-64 seem to have pretty stiff upper plate armor. Uh, even the T-64A seem to have a little bit more bouncy to it. You know, uh, you know it just seemed to be stronger than what it normally is. <clears throat> That being said, uh, you know, there's ways around it. Um, I'm fine with the 774 staying in, in, in the game and not going with the other solution would be going 833. Um, but the 833 round, <clears throat> it would be doable if the T64B kept its present meta on its uh, armor. But I have a feeling that's going to be less, and therefore I feel the 833 would be overkill at this point. Uh, another thing, historically, uh, from what I uh, have researched in some of us, the uh, stock round was never fired out of the M1. Only the 774 and 833 round. So we can go a bunch of different ways with this. Either lessen the armor on the uh, T64, where it's kind of a 50-50 pin deal if you're you know, got the correct uh, the correct angle or correct distance or whatnot. Uh, you just have a higher pen, uh, percentage of penetrating it versus what the dev server offered, which was zero, uh, unless you had a turret trap, which is, you know, you had to win the lottery to do that every time. Um, but if they lessen the armor, the 774 round would be adequate. Um, but if not, I would say 833 round, the M833 would even that playing field out. Um, but of course the price, uh, versus the price of everybody else's ammunition, like especially the T-64B, it, it was insane. I, I disagree with that completely, the, the, the price of the 774 round. And I do feel that they were the M1 Abrams APFSDS rounds and also the Challengers APFSDS rounds were underperforming drastically. And I do feel their opposition when it comes to the T-64, theirs was, and actually going on research, was overperforming by a good bit. So we've talked about the Abrams, uh, which is probably, at least in my head, the gold standard when we look at these four new tanks. So it's time to move on to the Leopard 2K. Now the Leopard 2K gives you something a little bit different. It gives you this idea of mobility and a very strong 120mm Rheinmetall gun. But it doesn't have that much armor behind us. So, going to Mills, when we talk about the Leopard 2K, is it just an extension of the meta of something like a KPZ, or is it more like an Abrams where maybe it could fit into some different roles? No, I think it's going to be more like the KPZ and MBT-70 were before they, their uh, auto loader was re nerfed. Because uh, it's got like a pretty fast reload, and it's got speed behind it. It just doesn't have armor like the KPZ and MBT. Actually, they have better armor than it. So it's going to be a shoot and scoot tank. But you're going to want to find spots where you can see a lot of people. And they're going to have trouble finding you. And when we look at the Leopard 2K as well, it's obviously, as you said, got speed on its side and the gun. And the fact that its reload is now the quickest of these new uh, Rank 6 tanks, uh, it's exactly the same as the Abrams. Something that MoFo brought up was this idea that these vehicles were designed to fight over long distances. So do you think this vehicle will be much better on like the larger maps, such as Folder and such as Poland, which is being reworked to be a larger map? Or do you think it could maybe sit in those city maps as long as you play it as kind of a peaker tank? Yeah, it's going to be, have to be played as a peaker tank just because you can't... Being stationary, this thing is basically signing your own death warrant. Uh, all anybody has to do is look in your general direction and you'll die with this tank. Just because it doesn't have any frontal armor besides the plating. It doesn't have any uh, composite behind it except on the sides and the sides of the turret. So on longer maps, you're going to have to be a flanker, much like the KPZ and MBT. And in cities, like you said, you're going to have to play peek around corners and use that peeker's advantage to your side. 
One of the surprising things for me when I look at the 120mm is the fact that it seems to have a really strong heat FS round, but quite a bad APDFS round. So, in your opinion, do you think this will be a rebirth of heat FS, or do you think the maybe just the AP uh, DSFS round just has the wrong stats on it? Uh, both rounds from the research I've done have wrong stats. The, uh, the heat FS is penning 50 millimeters more than it should. And so it's at 650, it should be around 600. Because the sheet I have here where it's tested, it was only able to pen 600 on flat armor at 2600 meters. And the APFS DS with the 410 millimeters point blank is also incorrect supposed to pen 470 of flat armor at 3200 meters as far as this testing sheet that i'm consulting goes so i feel like the heat fs will be good if it stays in this way but the apfsds is the better bet if it receives its historical value so if if we talk about the current state of the dev server, then the heat FS is going to be the way to go. But if they in the second iteration or when it hits live actually gets its realistic uh, penetration on the APFS DS, that is pretty much what uh, what we should use. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. So. Another thing about the Leopard 2K, it obviously has really good anti-air capabilities, uh, which is nice on it, and it also has the speed behind it. Now, something that I've also seen at higher tiers is the fact that there is this idea of over-penetration. So, when you penetrate with either APCR at lower tiers or APFSDS, and the round doesn't go off perfectly, sometimes it passes through the tank. Does the Leopard 2K have enough armor to make sure that these rounds, the Laundar rounds, will actually spread? Or will there actually be circumstances, kind of like with the other Leopards, where the round will just go straight through? And will this benefit it in any way? Uh, it depends on where you're shooting it with the Laundar. Uh, with APFSDS, if you hit this thing in the turret, you'll most likely kill two crew members and take out a breach. But if you shoot it at an angle on the front hole, you have a good chance of taking out the driver and then commander and gunner for a one-shot kill. And anything through the side probably shouldn't kill this thing in one shot unless it's ammo. Just because it's got so little armor on the sides and so little armor on the front that you won't see much spalling from APFSDS rounds. It's going to be more like APCR was where it only needles through a tank and kills anything that's on a straight line trajectory from where the round would hit. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, so, would you say the gun is the main uh, advantage of this tank over others, or do you think speed in the current meta, or maybe the meta that's going to be created, is going to be more important than the uh, the heat FS and hopefully the buffed APFS DS? I think it's going to be a combination between the speed. So that, that's going to allow you to get in positions where people won't normally expect you to be. And then backing up that speed is the gun, which is going to allow you to hopefully one-shot opponents so they don't get a chance to tell their teammate, oh, hey, the guy who shot me is over here. He's going to shoot me again if he survives. Yeah, that makes sense. To me, it feels like it's pretty much going to play out exactly like uh, the way that the MPT and the KPZ do now, and even the earlier Leopards, where it seems much more beneficial just skirting around the map and waiting near the enemy spawn and hoping that your team annihilates it. So, when we talk about uh, annihilates the enemy team, I should say, when we talk about that kind of playstyle, which definitely is present at higher tiers, uh, especially if you look at, like, Folder, which, uh, over the north side, you pretty much have a skirting way around the whole damn map. With these new maps in play as well, when we look at the new version of Volokolamsk and also the new version of Poland, they're a lot bigger, there's a lot more forest, there's a lot more divots in the ground. Do you think this playstyle is going to become more prominent, especially from German, st German teams? Or do you think the long-range battles across the map will be much more beneficial for them instead of the uh, basically spawn camping? I feel like the Volokolamsk map with the 
lake in the middle, that's going to probably promote more flanking into spawn camping. But the Poland map should be more balanced, I believe. Yeah, that makes sense. So we've talked about the Leopard 2K. We've talked about the uh, Abrams. So now it's time to get on to the T-64B. Now I think what we'll do is we'll all have a bit of chat about this because we don't have a designated person for this. But the T-64B in the dev server was an interesting cookie because it was basically the first tank where the values just seemed completely wrong compared to, well, depending on who you talk to. Uh, some people said it was absolutely miles off, some people said it was only a bit off, others said that the gun itself, uh, you know, some of it was off, some of it was correct, others said the armor was correct, others said that the engine was wrong, the reverse was wrong, all of this stuff. So, let's go to both of you, uh, starting off with MoFo. So, MoFo, what did you find... Uh, or maybe just talking about either the gun specifically, or just pick a part of the tank which you thought seemed a bit dubious, at least compared to what you'd read uh, historically about the vehicle. All right, I'll, uh, t <laughs> I want to say so much. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, it's two things really. When uh, you, when you ended that question, you said historically. Um, Going to the uh, spreadsheets of ammunition types and their tests and trials, uh, I'm not going to get into exact numbers on anything, but there's an average there. The uh, the 22 round, what was the code on it? It is what the 3BM 22 round. The research I did on that round, uh, that round. And I'm saying I'm answering this because we, you know, ended it with the historical question. Historically, that round just seems to be overperforming on average of 30 to 40 millimeters per distance. You know, no matter what the distance, it and probably maybe a little bit more at closer. But where it for, you know, just just to be safe, let's say 30 to 40 millimeters. I felt like it was overperforming. Um, the stock round seemed to be on par. I was fine with the stock round, but that upgraded round was just a little too much. It was negating anything it ran into. And with that going along with the upper glacis armor and the and the turret cheeks on that thing, it was just man, it was it was like putting a five year old up against a a thirty year old three hundred pound bully. You just weren't going he wasn't gonna put a dent in it. He would have to be lucky and put his eyes out, which would, you know, get in that like a turret trap or a lower glacis shot. But your 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 vetted players aren't gonna give you that, okay? Um, or your average players that know better are not gonna give you that. Um it's it's Achilles tenor, of course it's re uh, reverse speed, but the thing didn't need to reverse. <laughs> just need to keep distance and keep shooting, keep his gun barrel pointed at you, and you're good to go. Um, but yes, the combination of the upper plate armor and that upgraded round, there was just no defeating the thing, especially at distance, uh, which we touched on earlier, what these tanks were designed to do. Um, I felt like it was overperforming by a long shot. Uh, it was obvious it was overperforming. So going to Mills, one of the things that Mofo didn't really bring up was the different ammunition types. He talked about the ammunition types which were overperforming, which I completely agree with. He also talked about the armor, which was overperforming, which everything that I've read says that it's about 40 millimeters above what it should be on the upper glacis. So if you have any points to add to that, you know, that would be good, but also... It does have the the the, diff, the main difference between the T64A and the T64B was the modified uh, gun loader. What I can't remember the name. The breech. The breech was uh, changed so it was able to uh, fire ATGMs. Now, do you think these ATGMs are going to be a big, you know, addition, or do you think it's just going to be lawn dart thunder once again? No, it's definitely going to be Lawn Dart Thunder just because the uh, the armor that we have now on these modern tanks, it's just a, it's a lot better against chemical rounds such as ATGMs, Heat, and other, other uh, Hash. So I think it's going to be Lawn Dart Thunder just because it's easier to defeat armor 
and uh, bounce a shot into a trap than it is for you know hitting said spot with the ATGM. 